Now before we talk about what a subdata sheet is, we need to understand what data sheets are. And then we'll talk about the sub data sheet of data sheets. And as you recall in an earlier training video, data sheets is the place in tables, also in queries, that you can view and enter in your data. Think of the keyword data and data sheet to view data and enter in data, okay? In any case, the two views that we were toggling back and forth when we were uh, creating and designing our tables and then entering in our data was the design view and the data sheet view. You can see up here I've got my customer's table open in data sheet view. How do I know? Well, when you come up here on the Home tab to the Views group, you can see the design element, meaning that if you want to go to the design view, because right now you're in the data sheet view, I mean, you can click on the drop down arrow and see that the data sheet is highlighted there. That's fine. We haven't talked about the other two views, but we will later on, the pivot chart and pivot tables. But right now we were just focusing on uh, data sheet design. So click on the design button. It takes me to the design view where I can edit the fields that I've already added, add additional fields, update the data type, and so on. And then when I want to go ahead and start entering in data into those fields, then, of course, come back up to the uh, same place. And instead of being a design icon, now it's the data sheet view icon. Click on that. Go ahead and view your data. Enter in your data. So having said that, now that we know what a data sheet is, subdata sheets, the definition is subdata sheets are data sheets nested within data sheets, like nesting a table within a table, but that they're related. In other words, we create relationships between those two tables, and it will give us that ability to view the subdata sheets. In other words, I'm looking at the uh, data sheet here, and if I want to see what table it's linked to without opening up the other table, then come up here, and I don't know if you noticed this, but when we started creating relationships between our two tables and some of the tables we opened up, you notice that this additional field over to the left has been added with little plus signs. You expand that, it opens up the subdata sheet or the table that the customer table is linked to. Now, are these actually supposed to be linked? As you recall, when it came to creating relationships or viewing relationships, those tables that are linked, you can come up here, click on the database tools tab, go to the relationships group, click on relationships, and there we go, customers to orders. But the customers table is also linked up to the billing information table. It's a one-to-one -one relationship, and this is one-to-many, by the way. In other words, the customers table, I can have one company name, and over here have one contact person at that company. That's why it's one-to-one, -one, and that's why I linked the primary key to primary key and not created a foreign key because I don't want to have many contacts. And then we can have one customer have hopefully many orders, so that's why we have the infinity symbol, the foreign key. Hopefully we have a lot of duplicate customer IDs. That means that they made a lot of orders, okay? So one to many. In any case, back to our customers table, you can see that the subdata sheet, there's only one. Well, see if this gives it away. How do I know which subdata sheet is it? Well, order ID, order date, hmm, must be the orders table, okay? Because I don't have these uh, fields in the uh, billing info table that the customer table is also linked to. So see if this makes sense. I have the record here for Happy Town Play World, uh, the customer's name, and when I go ahead and expand the plus sign, it's linked to that table, so it shows me the subdata sheet, and in this case, all the orders that that customer has made. And what's cool about this is that if that uh, customer calls now, I can go ahead and create an additional order. If I want to go ahead and expand them all at once, then I have to be in one of the uh, main records or the data sheet, not in the subdata sheet. So when I click up here, and I go to the Home, to the Records group, and click on More, down to Subdata Sheet, it gives me these options, okay, to expand, collapse, and remove. But if I'm in the Subdata Sheet, and I go to More, to Subdata Sheet, I can't expand or collapse, because what am I collapsing within the Subdata Sheet? Nothing. But in the uh, Main Data Sheet, then of course More, to Subdata, I would be collapsing or expanding or removing the Subdata Sheets. So I can go ahead and expand all, and of course I can go ahead and subdata sheet to collapse all. So the subdata sheets are very unobtrusive. I mean, you just get this little plus sign. If that annoys you, then of course you can always remove the uh, subdata sheet. So by default, anytime you start creating relationships with your tables, Access is going to figure out the relationships and start linking up or creating subdata sheets. You can, well, this little column here that you can expand and find the related data or table that's tied to this table here. Again, we've got the customer's table over in the relationships here that you can see, linked up to two different tables. So why didn't it go from customers and just open up the subdata sheet to billing info? Why did it go to uh, orders? Well, by default, it wants to go, or it leans towards the one-to-many relationship, where you can have one-to-many as the default. Now, you don't have to have that. You can go ahead and remove it, but it can only have one subdata sheet at a time, meaning that when I expand this, it's linked one way to just one table and not having two tables side by side. But it could have 
a subdata sheet within a subdata sheet within a subdata sheet, if you want to go that route. If I want to go ahead and remove a subdata sheet, well, let me go ahead and collapse it first. Then come up here to the uh, Home tab, to the Records group, click on the More button again, and then go ahead and remove it. I no longer have that field. Now I can go back and say, okay, I didn't want it the way that Access defaulted it, you know, the Customers table to the uh, Orders table. I want to be able to view the relationship or the subdata sheet to the Billing Info table. So now that I'm in the Customers table, then I can come up here, click on the More button again, go to Subdata Sheet, and click on Subdata Sheet. It gives me a list of all the tables and it says, okay, what fields that have the matching data type and the same type of data do you want to link up to, the master to the child? Now the master is going to be what I'm in currently, which is the customer's table, and the child fields will be that uh, primary key or foreign key with the matching data type and type of data in another table. Now you can see why I strongly recommend, like I said in an earlier training video, that when you create foreign keys or you're linking up one table to another table, the primary keys, where you want to go ahead and create the same name, because you can see customer ID to customer ID. I mean, I can name this something else that it's linking to and call it CID, and as long as it has the same data type and type of data, then we're fine. But, I mean, it just makes so much more sense for me. So I have the table with the master field customer ID, the primary key. By default, it wants to link up, well, to what table? Click on the drop down arrow and these fields, order ID and order date, it's got this magnetism that it wants to link up if it has more than one relationship with different tables to the one to many. So it's pointing right towards the order table. I mean the operative word here or fields are order, order, order ID, order date. So to change that, all I have to do, leave the master alone, is to come up here and select the table that I want to link to, the child field, and notice that when I click on that and I click on this drop down arrow again, I don't have the order ID or the order date. Well, I have the first order, but in any case, so it changes that and it only shows the fields in the billing info and it's got the customer ID. So I'm linking customer ID from the uh, customers table, which has all the customer information, to the customer ID, as you can see by only clicking on the drop down arrow, the fields within that table, the customer ID there. So I can go ahead and click OK and there we go, the plus signs. So I expand it and it gives me the subdata sheet. So we have the uh, customer name, then we have the contact person over there. Now what's interesting is I got another plus sign here, and when I click on that, it goes back to the customer name. Because you're looking at a one-to-one -one relationship because for every contact person that I have at that company, well, that contact person is assigned to that company, and that company is assigned to that contact person, that contact person is assigned to that company, blah, blah, blah. It goes on forever, so that's very annoying. So in a way, I guess you could see why when you go ahead and create relationships that Access automatically wants to go towards the one-to-many, if that table is linked to two different tables, then the one-to-one. -one. Because, man, this just goes on forever. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and we'll click on More, go back to Subdata Sheet, and remove that. And notice that because I wasn't in the main data sheet, but one of the subs, it just removed it from that. Oh, boy, that's annoying. So what I want to do is come back up here, and this is a good lesson, go into your main data sheet view, and then go ahead and click on More, Subdata Sheet, and Remove. And then we can go back real quick to Subdata Sheet, to Subdata Sheet here. And the master is going to be the table I'm currently in that I want to link up to the other table, which, again, by default, access is attracted towards the one-to-many relationship. So we're looking at, by default, the fields in the order table, the customer ID. Click OK. We're back to where we started. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel to get notified of the latest videos. And for great specials on my products, please see the description below this video.